In this episode, we'll be doing a comparison of my RPOD 179 versus my Keystone Bullet 243 BHS. We'll note the exterior and interior features that stand out on both units. Hey everybody, this is John Marucci. Thanks for visiting the On The Road YouTube channel. You know, this channel is all about helping you get the most out of your RV travel experience. Before we get going, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when new videos are published. If you want to dive deeper, we put more content and photos on Instagram and Twitter at John Marucci. So let's jump in. Those who follow this channel regularly know that while I have owned two R-Pods, previously a 2016 R-Pod 171 and currently a 2017 R-Pod 179, I recently purchased the 2020 Keystone Bullet 243 BHS to have for longer trips. Both the R-Pod and the Keystone have features that I like. The comparison I do in this episode is based on features and size, not on long-term reliability or satisfaction. For those shopping for a new RV, while there are differences in price between the two units, the larger consideration is that of size and weight. The Keystone is almost 9 feet longer and has a base weight that is over 2,200 pounds heavier than the R-Pod. If you don't have or do not want to own a truck, this will eliminate this option from your consideration. So let's look at the R-Pod first. So here's some of the R-Pod advantages. From an exterior perspective, the height of the R-Pod is only 9 foot 7 inches versus the Keystone's 10 foot 8 inches. So it's actually a foot taller, the Keystone. And that's important because when you're traveling, you know, lower is actually better, especially say you're backing into a site that has low branches or whatnot. I always want a smaller unit than a larger one. It's also, by the way, easier to tow and has better visibility. The R-Pod is narrower, so you don't necessarily need extra tow mirrors to uh, look around the R-Pod. It's actually easier to tow, I've noticed in my experience as well. Obviously, you're going to get better MPG when you're towing a lighter trailer and the R-Pod's much lighter than the Keystone, so you're going to get better miles per gallon versus the Keystone. And like I said a moment ago, access to smaller campsites is very important, and this is one of the main things to talk about advantages to the R-Pod. So oftentimes, to get in the state parks or national parks, you know, 20 feet is oftentimes the limit that they'll let you to get in a certain site. So when you have a smaller unit like an R-Pod, you have many more options than a longer or bigger unit like a Keystone. So just remember that when you're thinking of these different units. Smaller is oftentimes a better unit to get into various campsites. And a smaller unit also like the R-Pod is much easier to store. 20 feet versus, you know, almost 29 feet for the Keystone can save a lot of money if you're storing off-site. So the R-Pod you can store on a smaller site versus the Keystone and you know where you store things often will uh, charge you more for a longer or bigger trailer. Okay and then I would also say something about the R-Pod I really like is the style. You know the R-Pod's a real eye-catcher. We get so many comments when we're out and about with the R-Pod as people walk by or come up and say something. You know the comments we've gotten for the Bullet is that it looks like a new trailer but nothing you know, like that's cute or really nice or really like that. So, I mean, the style point would absolutely, in my opinion, go to the R-Pod. Now, from an interior perspective, you might think, well, the bigger uh, Keystone has everything going for it versus the R-Pod interior, and that's just not the case. From recent experience of taking both out, you know, the new Keystone and the existing 179, you know, the, the R-Pod actually has electrical outlets that are in better places, better accessibility in the kitchen, and close to the dinette versus the Keystone. Believe it or not, the 179 R-Pod has more drawers. It has six drawers versus two. It also comes standard with a max air fan, and the Keystone does not have a max air fan standard, so you get very good ventilation. The max air fan's really nice. Uh, here's going to be a kind of a different take, and this is strange, but the toilet seat, okay? <laughs> so the toilet seat in the R-Pod is silent, and in the Keystone, there's a strange crunch every time you move on the toilet seat. <laughs> it almost sounds like you're crunching an empty water bottle. It's just really odd to the point probably going to try and replace it at some point here. The R-Pod also has a nice convection oven the Keystone doesn't have. The Keystone only comes with a microwave, but the R-Pod's convection oven can really come in handy cooking things. Convection microwave combo. I would also say it's actually much easier to clean the slide out. So the 179 slide out is shorter. You don't need a very tall ladder to clean it outside, and all you need is a small step stool inside to clean it, and that's advantage to the R-Pod. 
Okay, so let's switch sides now and look at advantages to the Keystone, the Keystone Bullet uh, 243BHS, which I just bought. Now, exterior-wise, the Keystone has a 19-foot power awning. Now, this is obviously really nice. A 19-foot power awning is big. A lot of shade. The fact that it's power makes it nice and easy to operate. Uh, with my 179 now, that now there are awnings on some of the 179s. I don't have one. I use a Pahaki uh, visor. But the awning is definitely a plus and easy to deal with. You know, you have wind come up, you can just use the power button and pull it in real quickly. So advantage to the Keystone in this regard versus my 179. Okay, another big deal to me, the Black Tank Flush Inlet is on the correct side. So those of you who have R-Pod 179s know that you have to actually take the hose around the other side of the R-Pod to connect your Black Tank Flush for whatever reason. But the Black Tank Flush connection inlet on the Keystone is on the utility side where your same outlets for your gray and black tanks are. So that's a definite plus for the Keystone. Uh, on the Keystone 243, there's only one single outlet for both tanks, so the gray and black come to one outlet. And some of the R-Pods do have that, by, but my 179 doesn't. 179s have two se separate outlets. So, uh, of course, with the 179, then, the bummer there is you have to switch the hose between the black and the gray tank when you're flushing, and on the Keystone, you just leave it alone. Some R-Pods have one outlet, which is fine, but the 179 doesn't. Another plus to the Keystone is belly space. It's got a huge front belly uh, space under the bed that you can put just a bunch of stuff. Uh, the 179, those of you who have one, know that there's a limited amount of space. It's a good amount of space, but it's not near the size of the Keystone, so you can, can bring a lot more stuff on the Keystone. A really big deal, obviously, for the Keystone here is it's got enclosed and heated underbelly. Okay, so this is really important. It allows you to be able to camp a lot longer during the season. You don't have to put up your, your unit quickly. Uh, the heated underbelly, which means the heat actually is ducted and goes inside the underbelly to keep your tanks warm, means you have a much longer camping season. That's a big deal. And the other thing I like about the Keystone, it's pre-wired for a backup camera. You can get a Furion backup camera and put it on there, and it works just great. Okay, so on the interior side, there are some advantages to the Keystone on the interior. Just the storage, there's a lot more storage. Uh, I do like the gas range. It's got a three-burner uh, with an igniter, so you don't have to get the, the uh, lighter to light your gas range. It has an igniter and three burners, which is really nice. I actually have found that I'm enjoying the gas oven, too, versus just a microwave convection. So this is also important. Think about it if you're going boondocking and you don't have power to plug into. You really can't use your microwave or convection. But if you have a gas oven, you could still cook things in the oven. So that's nice. And we've done some pizza and things in there, and it works really well. So I'm pleased with the gas oven. Obviously, the refrigerator on the Keystone is a larger one. The 179 has the smaller Dometic. Uh, the refrigerator on the Keystone is a two-side, you know, a, a freezer up top and a refrigerator. Six cubic feet works very well. So the refrigerator is definitely a plus to the Keystone versus the 179. The kitchen sink size is very large. Cabinet quality I really like on the Keystone. Very large cabinets, uh, very high-quality cabinets that I think are built uh, extremely well. And I'd have to give the plus to the Keystone there. And then, of course, bed quality and size. It comes with a much firmer bed. One of the main complaints that you hear on the R-Pod forums is the mattress. And the quality of the mattress in the Keystone just is not a problem right out of the factory. So much better mattress. Something that R-Pod obviously can improve upon. A Keystone has that down. Uh, no need to replace it. So I'm happy with the mattress. Uh, the dinette table is another thing I really like on the Keystone. You don't have to, you know, fold it up and, you know, put it down to for storage or for additional uh, sleeping space. You can just leave it up when you travel. It's on two poles. It, it isn't collapsible in that regard. And so you don't have to turn it upside down and strap it down when you're traveling. So nice on that for the uh, Keystone. And the cushions seem to be much firmer. So if you remember, I've recently had a, a video out about step-by-step upgrading your cushion foam on your 179. No need to do that on the Keystone. It comes with decent cushion uh, quality all out of the box here, so very good. A few more things I really like about the Keystone, the water heater controls. If you remember, and I have a video on uh, basic water heater stuff on the channel for the R-Pod, to turn on the electric element to in the R-Pod water heater, you actually have to go outside and flip the switch there. And on the Keystone, that's all inside on the panel, so no needing to go outside if it's raining or whatnot to get out of the unit, out of the trailer, and go do that. You can just do it from inside. It's also got a nice master light switch control. And the ducted heat I talked about a little bit. The other thing that's important is actually has ducted AC. 
and it's much quieter in the Keystone versus the R-Pod, so that's good. So if you're interested in learning more about either of these trailers, I invite you to check out my Discovery playlist on the YouTube channel. It has a bunch of different stuff to help those who are doing Discovery on different travel trailers. And if you like this video again, remember to give it a thumbs up and share it. Enjoy making these videos for you. Thanks for watching again. This is John Marucci, and so long for now.